Good afternoon to my Hampstead Baptist family. Uh, it's good to be with you. I'm sorry that we were not able to get a video out. We had a, uh, not a issue of any person, but the, uh, we had a technological issue with getting a video out to you guys. So I'm gonna film a short version of the sermon today. So I'm uh, gonna keep it relatively short, but get the high points of yesterday's sermon. And as we're working through the book of Ephesians, and um, uh, I've shown this to the in-service, or in-person crowd, uh, but we have the CSB Scripture Notebook is a resource that um, could be helpful for some. Uh, it is a, it's a copy of, so this one is just Ephesians, and it has the text on one side and room to write on the other. And so uh, if you're a note taker or um, you're wanting to become a note taker, maybe you're wanting to, to learn how to take notes as you read the Bible and things of that sort, but you're intimidated to write in your regular Bible, this is a great option. So if you're interested in one of these, please let us know and we'll get you pointed in the right direction. But yesterday's sermon was uh, Ephesians 1 verses 7 through 14, and it, it reads like this. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him we also received an inheritance because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement to the purpose of his will, so that we, we who had already put our hope in Christ, may bring praise to his glory. In him you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of, your, of our inheritance until the redemption of the, of the possession to the praise of his glory. So as we outlined in week one, right, we're seeing the, uh, the three themes of redemption, adoption, and security represented in these passages. And um, as, as you read the Bible, it's helpful to note when there is a distinct pattern. And here in verses 7, 11, and 13, you have the lead of in him. And so a, if you wanted a way to describe or summarize the teaching of this passage, it's in him. Everything comes back to in Christ. Our redemption comes back to in Christ, our adoption and our security all come back to in Christ. So in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, which is a reminder, one, that we need redemption. We as sinners, we need redemption. We, we owe a debt. There's a cost to our sin that we have to pay for, and we are incapable of paying on our own. And it was paid through his blood. So much in the same way as we take for granted other things in our lives, we take for granted the fact that our redemption cost God. And it cost God a price that we could never pay. This lends towards the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, that we serve a God who is so much more gracious and full of grace than we could ever be. And God, with all of this rich grace, he richly pours it out on us with all wisdom and understanding. God's plan for salvation was never haphazardous. It was never accidental. It was never something that whimsically came to him but it's beautifully meticulously put together. I gave the illustration of, it's like, uh, particularly men, maybe we can understand this illustration, is you've been working on a project, cannot figure it out, and somebody else walks by and just flips a switch, and they've got it, they had a better understanding, they knew what was going on, and that's how God is. With all of his wisdom and understanding, he knew the redemp how to create the redemption that we so desperately need. In verse 9, it says, He made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure that He purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time. That God's plan didn't start haphazardously, but as we saw in verses 3 through 6, was uh, in Christ before the foundations of the world, God had this beautiful plan worked out that He would send His Son. And throughout the scriptures, we see a foreshadowing of His Son coming through men such as Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Nehemiah, men who would be capable but not the Savior. 
And eventually Jesus would be at the right time, the mystery of God's will. Now, what is God's will? It is to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. And we often think of our salvation as, as West, in our Western American context, we tend to be hyper-individualistic. We, we don't like to think in terms of the corporate. Uh, a case in point is when there's a big announcement, you typically only listen to the part that affects yourself, right? I, I think of uh, school students who are waiting to see if there's a snow day. They don't care which other schools get out. There's one school they want to know about. We are that way. But what we see in scripture, however, is that there is uh, an overarching plan to not just redeem me, but to redeem all of God's people. Not just all of God's people, but everything. God is redeeming everything to rid it of sin's terrible curse so that everything will be the way it was designed to be. So we have our redemption, that we are sinners who God purchased by the blood of his son. But then we are also adopted. We see that we have received an inheritance. And some key notes, one is inheritance is where we're getting the adoption language, also borrowing from above. But we're also seeing that we received this, this inheritance, this life with God is not something that we ourselves created or earned. I didn't go out and get it. This isn't a, you were motivated enough and you got it. Instead, it's you received it. And why? Because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement to the purpose of his will, that all of this was by God's beautiful design. Now, just like last week, right? When we see a doctrine such as uh, predestination, or uh, we have some, we could say it in the, in the terms of like God's uh, uh, divine will versus human volition. And we see both represented in scripture, right? Where we see predestination here. We also see things like God so loved the world that he gave his son that whoever would believe would not perish, but have everlasting life. We see both spectrums, uh, represented. We have to hold both, not as the one is the enemy of the other, but rather as two common themes in tension. They need each other, right? They're like a nut and a bolt. They need each other. Um, and so this predestination here is pointing towards the idea that God has a beautiful plan that he's working out to the good of his will. His adopting us was in the language we used in week one is that God ha adopts us for relationship, but with purpose. Two parts, relationship and purpose. And the purpose was what? We see here in verse 12, so that we who are already put our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. Our purpose as God adopts us, he does not adopt us because we're simply cute. And he just thinks that it would be amazing to know us as if we bring something to the table. He adopts us so that we can live in the divine purpose God has for humanity. When we were created in the garden, we were created with the purpose of celebrating God's glory and dwelling with him, relationship with purpose. However, sin disrupted that, and we were not able to have that relationship with God or fulfill our purpose. This is why throughout the pandemic, we have sought everything we could possibly find to have security, to have personal security, and we simply cannot find it because we are not designed for anything else. We're not designed to find our fulfillment in our jobs, in our loved ones, in, uh, in evil things. We're not designed to find our fulfillment anywhere except God. And so what we have here is that God adopts us for a purpose so that we can live as we were designed to live, which was as those who would reflect his glory as his image bearers. Now in verse 13, we get this idea of security in him. You are also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and when you believed. So we have this idea of being sealed. And the famous example in scripture is the tomb, right? The tomb had a seal put on it. And that, that uh, seal was not just for decor, but it actually denoted ownership and purpose. Who owned this stone and who was allowed to move it? Who had authority? God says here that we were sealed in much the same way, but we were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. We were sealed by God himself. When we are God's child, when we are saved, right? And that's what we find here is when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, when you believed, right? When all of these things happened, you were sealed, you were covered. If you will, God put his mark on you to say, this one is mine. 
So when you're redeemed, you're adopted. And when you're adopted, you're sealed. And all ultimately in Christ. Now note, the Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of his possession to the praise of his glory. That this is, we are, there's a saying that you, uh, we can, we should not be so heavenly minded that we're of no earthly good. And I hate that saying because we as Christians are called to be heavenly minded so we can be of earthly good. The earth does not, the world around us does not need more earthly good. It needs Christ. And so as we're secured, we are also um, sealed with the Spirit and we await what is coming. We know that Christ will return. He will sort the sheep from the goats. He will cleanse things and then he will hand over the possession, everything, his church, uh, the world. He will hand it all over to the Father and then we will see life as it was meant to be. But until then, we who are Christians have a heavenly mindset, understanding what's coming. We live now with our present inheritance, with the Holy Spirit, and we share the gospel. We are, find our primary motivation in the gospel and in the fact that we know what's coming and we have a taste of that now. So my challenge to, uh, off of this sermon was this. One, if you're a Christian, are you trying to find any source of identity anywhere but in the fact that you are redeemed, you are adopted, and you are secured in Christ? Are you trying to find your identity in politics, in your job, in wealth, in your family, in society? Where are you trying to find that value? And if you're trying to find it anywhere but in Christ, you will never be satisfied. So return to Christ. And if you're not a Christian and you're searching the world for some source of uh, purpose and value, you won't find it anywhere but God, because that's what we're designed for. So if you have any questions about becoming a Christian, uh, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk with you about what it means to be a Christian. Maybe you're someone who uh, you haven't been back yet. I know that the pandemic has been long and hard for many, and the world is changing. And I know that here in Maryland, uh, as I posted in a previous video, that our, our mask mandate is lifted and we have some who are back and some who are not back and many people feel many different ways. Number one, we are rooted in Christ and Christ is where we find all of our value so the rest of it needs to be a secondary issue. That said, I also understand maybe you do live with somebody who's immuno immunocompromised or maybe you yourself is. Uh, maybe you're just nervous. Maybe what We would love to talk with you. We'd love to... Um, uh, I would love to, to Zoom with you, to FaceTime with you, whatever it is. We'd love to be in touch with you, um, to love on you, and to encourage you. Uh, so thank you so much. Sorry again that the video is a little delayed. Technology is a funny little thing. Uh, we're so thankful for it, but when it erupts, it, doesn't, it does seem to erupt. So thank you for your patience. This was this, this week's sermon. Next week, we're looking, again, walking forward in Ephesians. How does all of this relate to how we interact with one another? So thank you for watching. I can't wait to see you next. I can't wait to hear from you next. So pray for you often. We love you and we're thankful for you.